What's up YouTube friends? So today I'm going to show you how to make these easy fishing lure tumblers. They're the perfect gift for Father's Day or just the man in your life. So the things you're going to need are of course a tumbler. Now I get these off of makerflow.com and this one is a 32 ounce tapered. Now the great thing about these from Maker Flows is that they do come with a box. Of course it has a lid, a reusable plastic straw, and it also has care instructions inside the cup here. It's on a little card. And you're also going to need some fish nets. Now I actually picked up some thigh high ones because that's all I could find. But if you can find like the pantyhose ones, the ones that look like pants or leggings, those are better. You can get more of the fish net from them. Now I can get about three cups out of the thigh highs. With the longer ones I get about four, unless you're doing smaller cups. And these are also reusable, but you want to make sure that they are completely 100% dry because you do not want your paint to smear. And then you're also going to need some spray paint. So I'm just going to be doing the classic one today. I do have a few other colors that I'll show you at the end of this video. So right here I have a sun yellow, a jungle green, it's like a fluorescent green, and a pumpkin orange. Any colors that you want will work though. Alright guys, so I put my fish nets on my cup. And I just have my PVC with a foam football on there, if you can see that. And then I'm just going to stick it on here. Now the tighter that you have your fish nets, the larger the scales you have. And I like them pretty large. And that way you can get more use out of your fish nets also. So that looks good to me. Now the great thing about the first piece of your fish nets is that it has the tow line. So you know exactly where your halfway mark is. So now we just need to spray paint. So for this one in particular, I'm going to have the top half of the fish be orange. So what I'm going to do is shake up my spray paint. It's a good thing to wear gloves so your hands don't look like that. And then I'm just going to spray paint. And like I said, that's going to be my halfway mark. It's okay if you go over it a little bit. So just like that. And now I'm going to grab my other color. Now you could just use two colors per lure, that's fine, but I like to have a little transition color in between the top and the belly. So I'm going to be using the sun gloss yellow, or the gloss sun yellow. And I'm just going to go right along the edge of the orange. Just like that. Now it's okay that it splatters up here on the orange. I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but it is a little splattered. But that just makes it look like fish skin. Now for the belly, I'll be using the jungle green. And don't forget your bottom. So just like that. So now I'm just going to set this off the side and you want this to dry completely. And it's not so much that you want to make sure that it's dried on your cup, but you really want to make sure that it's dry on your fish net. That's where you're going to get into a smearing problem. All right, so I've let these dry for about four hours. They're nice and dry. And I'm sorry if the beginning of this video was kind of rushed. I had six of these cups I wanted to spray paint before it started raining. And literally, I got my camera inside and it started a downpour. And now the sun's back out. You gotta love this Midwest weather. So now I just wanna remove my fish nets from my cup. Like I said, you can reuse these. And you can see it gives it a nice fish scale look. Now if you have any areas like this one, these ones aren't so bad, so I'm just going to leave them. They don't bother me. For all we know, that could be a scar on the fish. And to me, that just looks very natural. I am going to put eyeballs and a fish design on the side here, so it might cover that up or it might not. But on this one right here, it has a pretty long line. So what I'm going to do is take a Q-tip with a little bit of spray paint on a plate, and then I'm just going to kind of dab it on there just to kind of camouflage that. 
So now I'm just going to put a thin coat of epoxy over my cups. I like to do that first before I put on my vinyl decals. That way if I make a mistake and I have to pull up my vinyl, it's not going to rip up any of the paint first. And we just need a nice thin coat. I have a whole cup here mixed up already, but you want about 20 to 30 ounces per cup. This was a 32 ounce tapered cup. So I'm just going to stick my finger in here. This is the fun messy part. And I just cover my entire cup. I kind of put a puddle here at the beginning and just use my finger to spread it around. And you want to not forget your bottom. Now the epoxy I'm using is this kind right here, and it's actually not my favorite. It is cheaper than the other ones that I like. I prefer the Pro Marina, and my second favorite would have to be the Amazing Clear Cast. This stuff right here mixes up pretty thin. I think it would be great for molds or anything like that. But the reason why it's not really my favorite is it takes an extra day to cure. Normally the other two, the Pro Marine and the Amazing Clear Cast, it's rock hard by the next day. This one usually takes a day and a half, if not two days. It's still pretty tacky. But I'm going to use this up before I get any of the other stuff. So I have a nice thin coat on here. Now I'm just going to take my heat gun and pop any bubbles. So now I'm just going to let this one dry overnight until it's nice and hard. And if you don't have a turner, there's another way that you could do this, and it's called the hang method. Now, I don't know how well it's going to work out with this thinner epoxy, but we'll find out. So all you're going to need to do is find something like this. I made this one. It's just out of wood and some PVC connectors. You want to put your cups on something to make them stand up straight. I just have some PVC with little footballs I got at the Dollar Tree. You want to get them as level as possible. And then you just want to take your epoxy I start at the top here and then just run a coat all the way down. Now this way I think is a lot messier. You have way more drips. But if this is all you have, this is what you can do. Now you really want to make sure you have some sort of silicone mat or something underneath of these because they do drip a lot. Now this is not my favorite method on how to do it, but if you don't have a turner, it does work. Since this is only the first coat, it should be fine, but I'm going to finish these off on my turner with my second coat just to make sure everything's nice and smooth. Alright, so now I'm going to let all these cups set overnight to dry. All right, so it is the next day and I am in Cricut Design Space. My cups are nice and dry. So now we just want to upload our fish design. So I actually have a few right here that I've already uploaded. Now I got these off of designbundle.com. They were having a sale. They usually have $1 sales or $5 sales, so go check them out. If you don't have these, you can always just search on Google for fishing lure SVGs and you pretty much get the same things right here. So I'm going to do this one here today. And insert image. Now this is way too big so I'm going to size that down to seven and a half. Just like that. Now when I put this SVG into my Cricut I saved it as a cut file so right here on the eye, it just took it as one piece. So I need to add my iris and a little glint of light to the iris. So I'm just going to go over here to shapes, add a circle. Now I'm going to make my circle yellow. And then I'm just going to line it up inside of my eye. 
just like that you want a little bit of black around the eye still showing so that looks good to me so now I'm going to grab another circle and I'm going to place it inside my iris and I want a pretty thick iris I will be using holographic glitter for this yellow part so I want a lot of that to show so I think I'll go a little bit smaller so that looks good to me so now I'm just going to highlight both of these circles I'm going to go up here to align horizontally and then align vertically and that's going to make sure that it's nice and centered I'm going to highlight those again and I'm going to come over here and hit slice and that's going to give me my iris so I'm just going to eyeball it where it should go in here you really can't use the align function for this because it's going to put your iris in the center over here somewhere so these are my two leftover pieces I'm going to get rid of one of them the other one I'm going to turn white and I'm going to make that really small this is just going to be the little glint in the eye so maybe a little bit bigger now I'm actually going to move that to the front because I want that on top and then I just like to place it somewhere in this left quarter of the eye so that looks really good to me so now I'm just going to highlight everything and you can see over here that it's all selected I'm gonna right click and hit duplicate because we need two of these per cup and then I'm gonna come up here to flip and flip vertical and that way we have both of these pieces this one will go on one side and then this one will go on the other and they're already facing the right directions so now I'm just going to come over here to make it and then you can see I have my three colors right here I'm actually not connected to my Cricut right now it's downstairs so we'll cut these out and we'll get to the next step alright so I have my pieces all cut out and weeded and I just want to show you the difference between the hanging method and then the spinner method. Now this was the hanging method and as you can see there is a lot more drips that you need to cut off. Compared to the one on the spinner there is still epoxy around the rim that you are going to need to trim off but mostly it's on the inside where you get your drips and stuff like that. So in order to clean those, I just take an X-Acto knife and I just trim it off and I like to cut towards the inside of the cup. That way you don't rip your epoxy down here. Since this is only first coat, it's not really that big of a deal. We can fix that, but if it was like your final coat, you definitely don't want to do that. So I just come around here and push my blade towards the inside of the cup. And of course you want to be careful. Now I'll finish that up later and then I'll just take some sandpaper and sand around the lip just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. It's just a little bit more work but if you don't have a spinner the drip method does work. So now I just want to assemble the eyes on my fish. So I grabbed a little bit of wax paper. So I'm just going to cut a little square of my wax paper and then I just have a little square of transfer tape so I'm just going to grab one of my eyes here and then I'm going to stick this onto my wax paper and I just want a little bit of the eye off probably can't see it that well but there's just a little bit of my eye off of the wax paper and that's just going to help me place this without sticking it all the way down 
So now I just want to line this up as best I can in the center of my eye. So all I did was line up the wax paper side as best I can. And now I'm just going to stick down the part that wasn't under the wax paper. So now I can just lift this up, remove the wax paper. and then stick it all the way down. Just like that. So next I'm just gonna grab one of my little spots. So now I'm just gonna place that little spot somewhere in the left quarter of my eye. Just like that. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the other eye. Now when you're putting your spot on the other piece, you're going to want to remember that it's going to go on the opposite corner here. This one was facing left, so this one I'm going to put on the right. So now I'm just going to grab my little stand here. I just made it out of PVC and some pool noodles. I'm going to grab one of my cups. I think it would look good on this one. So now I'm just going to grab a larger piece of transfer tape and you can reuse your transfer tape. This one is a reused piece and I actually think that it works better because it's less sticky. So I'm just going to lay this over my entire design and press it down. You want to carefully remove it from the transfer sheet. And then I'm just going to stick it on my cup. I'm going to have my eye just going up onto the orange. Now the first piece doesn't really matter that much. You just want to make sure that it's even on the other side. So this looks good to me. So all I did was run my finger down the middle and then I'm just going to carefully lay my design down. And then I'm just going to remove my transfer tape. So just like that. So now I'm just going to flip this around and put the other one on the other side. All right, guys, so now it should look like this. Now, all I need to do to finish this off is put a final coat of epoxy to if it needs it. Just clean it up and I'll throw them up on my Etsy shop. I'm going to finish up the other ones and I'll show you what they all look like. All right, guys, so I did have a little chipping right here. And right here on this cup and only this cup that just means that there was a very thin layer of epoxy or maybe not even any epoxy right there to begin with luckily it's all orange so I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that so I'm just going to go and put a little bit of orange spray paint on this paper plate I also have a little brush with a square head on it and then I'm just going to go and make little triangles just to fill in those spots Now right there was one spot, and right here is the other spot. You can't even tell. So now I'll just show you my other designs that I've made. So here is a blue, orange to green one. I really love that color combo. Here's a blue, green to yellow. A fluorescent green to dark green to yellow. The orange to green to yellow.
Probably my second favorite color combo is the red to orange to green. And then the first one, the one we fixed, orange to yellow to green. Now, as I mentioned, I still need to put the final coat of epoxy on these. Now, I hope to have these up no later than Friday. I will post these on Facebook as soon as I get them up on my Etsy shop. So first come, first serve. I hope you give this video a try. If you like this video and want to see more of my videos, go down below and hit that big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. I've been getting a few comments that are saying that people are not getting my videos in their subscription box. So just make sure that you are still subscribed. I'll go ahead and I'll leave my Etsy link down below. Also, if you'd like to see what I'm making over there and selling, if you'd like to support this channel, I'll also put my social media links down below if you'd like to follow me over there. And as always, thanks for watching, happy Tumblr making, and I'll see you next time.